Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. In this video, I want to go through a step-by-step -step on how to use a miniature spray gun. And along the way, answer some of the more common questions that come up. For this demo, I'll be using an Awada Eclipse G6, but I'll also be referencing the use and differences of the other Awada miniature spray guns, so you might find it helpful to also watch my earlier videos on miniature spray guns, surface primer, and the Awada RG3. And if you want to know more about each of the individual spray guns that I talk about here, refer to my webpage on Awada Miniature Spray Guns, where I have an explanation and a short video about each gun. For many modelers, just the concept of using a miniature spray gun seems like a total anathema. I've watched your videos on spray guns, but I think they seem too big, maybe more suitable for painting real cars. What are your thoughts about the Iwata HPTH? To answer this question, let's take a look at how a miniature spray gun sizes up and weighs in next to an HPTH in a full-sized HVLP gun. Here you can see that an actual full-sized HVLP spray gun dwarfs both the HPTH and the miniature spray gun. The HPTH is actually longer than the miniature spray gun which offers a much more balanced and ergonomic form. Looking at the head sizes of all three, you get a real sense of how much smaller the miniature spray gun is when compared to a full-size spray gun. And in fact, the functional portion of the miniature spray gun is only marginally larger than the fan pattern head of the TH, the major difference being the size of the air outlets for the fan. The HPTH weighs in at 7 ounces the G6 at 11.1 ounces. And to keep it in perspective, the full-size gun is 27.1 ounces, more than double the weight of the miniature spray gun. So the miniature gun weighs only 4.1 ounces more than the HPTH, which is less than the weight of a staple with many modelers. Comparing the ergonomics, you can see that the balance and control of the HPTH is a bit awkward and adding a plastic handle doesn't make it much better, because the trigger isn't large enough to accommodate more than one finger, trapping your middle finger underneath the trigger. The whole affair looks cobbled together. In contrast, the miniature spray gun fits very nicely in the palm of the hand, and allows both index and middle finger to operate the trigger, maintaining a much better balance and grip. Also, in the case of this design, a color cup that's adjustable for whatever angle you want, making it convenient for positioning your work and keeping it easy on your wrist. So after looking at this side-by-side -side comparison, you can see how the miniature spray gun's basically a redesigned, more compact airbrush, having only the form factor in common with a full-size paint gun. So once you can get your head around that, you can begin to understand its advantages. I'm basically new to airbrushing, but after watching your videos, I can see how reducing overspray can make for a better finish. So I bought an Awada LPH80, but I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong. I'm having trouble adjusting the gun. Am I supposed to be just applying one solid wet coat, or should I be trying to do light coats? All I seem to get is a lot of paint and runs. I'm very frustrated. Could you help? In this case, it sounds like this modeler is a bit of a novice and opted to purchase a miniature spray gun that requires an understanding of the principles of HVLP technology, which functions quite differently from the airbrush that he's used to in the past. So I'll do my best here to cover as many bases as I can think of, but there's no substitute for experience, even through trial and error. The term spray gun generally refers to a device that has a fan pattern. The fan cap spreads the material spray over a wider elliptical area, making the pattern considerably larger than an airbrush, and significantly reducing the amount of overlap, and therefore overspray, when you're applying an overall coat of paint. Unlike other manufacturers, Awada offers three functionally distinct miniature spray guns. First off, the Eclipse G5. This is a true miniaturization of a conventional spray gun and it's probably the easiest of the group to learn how to use. The G5 functions based on air pressure rather than air volume, so you can use it with smaller compressors. And handling the balance between material viscosity 
and air pressure is no different than with any 0.5 mm nozzle airbrush. The adjustments are very straightforward and painting with it's no more difficult than using the HPTH, only you have complete control over the exact amount of air to the fan, or you can shut the fan off completely for getting in tight spaces. The second group are actually airbrushes in a miniature spray gun body. These are the RG3L and the Eclipse G6. Both function just like large airbrushes and are also easy to use. The RG3 is basically the Iwata HP BE2 in a gun form. And if you want more information about it, refer to my video on the RG3. The Eclipse G6 is a unique hybrid in that it's the only true airbrush with an adjustable fan spray. The long tapered needle gives it the functionality of an airbrush along with the luxury of an adjustable fan cap. I'll be talking more about it a little later when I'm doing the demo. The third group is the LPH line. These are miniature HVLP spray guns. HVLP spray guns are air volume devices. The implications of this may be a bit nebulous to a novice, but traditional air painting tools like airbrushes and conventional spray guns are air pressure devices. They rely on greater pressures going into the device to draw and atomize the material. Greater amounts of air in the mixture result in overspray and fog. HVLP guns use a larger volume, meaning amount, of air at a much lower pressure to draw and atomize a larger volume of material. So you get more material in your pattern with less air, resulting in a significant reduction of overspray and fog. Setting up and using an HVLP gun is a bit more involved, and it requires a compressor that can supply a continuous flow of larger volumes of air. This is why I wouldn't recommend them to a novice. Unlike the other two types of miniature spray guns, an HVLP gun doesn't allow you much leeway for pressure adjustment. They're designed for an optimal cap pressure of 10 PSI, which typically requires about 14 PSI going into the gun. But don't be fooled by this low number. The sheer volume of air will still blow you away. And remember, you have no ability to adjust it. If you get out of the range of optimal air pressure, you're not going to get proper operation. So your only adjustments become the amount of material and the width of the fan spray. A look at the pattern of all three types will illustrate the differences. Here are all three types with the full application of the fan. The G5 is a conventional spray gun. The G6 is an airbrush and the LPH50 is an HVLP gun. Look first at how the paint leaves the nozzle and is affected by the fan cap. With the G5, the pattern starts to widen slightly as it exits past the air cap. The G6 pattern widens considerably more and is more atomized. The LPH patterns more straight and taper and the material is more evenly distributed. Looking at the midpoint, the G5 pattern is starting to straighten with a greater amount of material towards the center. The G6 pattern has grown considerably with a lot of airy material towards the periphery. The material in the LPH pattern, while more concentrated towards the center, has a more distinct tapered shape. Looking at the more distant area, you can see the G5 patterns become less defined as the border of the pattern is starting to break up. The G6 has become a huge non-distinct airy mix, one reason artists like this airbrush for backgrounds. The LPH50 pattern is still increasing while maintaining a definite pattern. The material is more evenly dispersed over the width than the conventional spray gun, and this is exactly what you'd expect from an HVLP design. Now let's use a miniature spray gun to paint an average size model. For this demo, I've selected the Iwata Eclipse G6. I'm using the G6 here for two reasons. It functions with most of the compressors that modelers use, and it's easily adapted to many different painting situations and sizes of models. Here I'll be priming and painting the base color on a 35th scale M4 Sherman, and using the G6 in sort of an airbrush mode, because the model has a lot of nooks and crannies. Before painting, I like to blow off the parts to remove any last minute dust that might have settled. 
The primer I'll be using is the Red Oxide Acrylic Lacquer Primer on the left. It's an old school PPG product marketed under the Acme name. I mix the paint in a separate canister, and you can see by how the paint runs off the lid about how much I've thinned it. Remember, it's only a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so I thin my material the same as I would for any similar airbrush. The material's added to a color cup. I know some modelers get their knickers all twisted because I'm using a 4 ounce cup, but remember you don't have to fill the cup, and the larger size is better for preventing spills and makes cleanup a lot easier. Next I want to adjust the pattern. Here you can see how small I can make the pattern. I usually adjust my size and material for a round pattern and then just add in a small amount of fan if necessary. When you add air to the fan, it decreases the air over the nozzle, so you'll need to tweak your incoming air pressure and material adjustments. In this case, I'm using about 18 pounds of pressure. Once I have the material and pattern where I want it, it's time to paint. Notice that I'm putting down a nice wet coat and moving quickly enough to maintain the wet surface as I continue to apply more material. This will prevent the buildup of overspray. Once I have the primer on, I wipe down the color cup, run a little lacquer thinner through the gun, and leave some in the cup while I prepare the paint. Here's the prime turret and hull. Know that the paint's so smooth it actually has an eggshell finish. This is especially nice for this type of model where you really can't get in with a scuff pad to knock off any rough surface. The paint I'm using is just Tamiya X32 thinned with lacquer thinner. Note that I've thinned the paint down enough to allow me to build up the pigment while keeping the surface wet, but not applying so much pigment as to obliterate any fine detail.
Here's the model with an extremely smooth base color coat, ready for any decals and weathering. Modelers who've seen my video on decals might now have a better understanding why I don't find it necessary to gloss the model prior to decal application. So hopefully, this video has answered some questions and shown you how useful a quality miniature spray gun can be no matter what size model you build. So long for now, and I'll see you next time.